So opportunity today is day 4480 since, uh, since landing. And I'll remind you it was intended to be a minimum of a 90 day mission. So we're, uh, we're getting up there. So just uh, to remind you of the, sort of the lay of the land, this is uh, Endeavor Crater, this 20 kilometer diameter impact crater. Um, Opportunity landed up here and over the last uh, uh, 13 years has been uh, driving down to uh, Endeavor Crater. And zooming in on this area called Marathon Valley, so here's the rim of Endeavor. There's this uh, notch in the rim. This is uh, dubbed Marathon Valley because uh, right outside uh, before they they uh, ventured into the valley, they had reached the uh, marathon distance uh, on the earth, so hence Marathon Valley. Um, and this is just a, a close-up view of, of where they've been wandering around in here for about the last year and a half now. And right now they're sitting right here, and uh, the inside of uh, Endeavor Crater is off to our right. And so just a couple of uh, views of Marathon. Um, so this was taken just about five days ago. They're still uh, experimenting with the uh, robot arm, uh, trying to take uh, measurements of the composition of the, of the rocks and soils in this area. And the one thing that they've been particularly interested in, you see these sort of grooves in the, in the surface. And uh, the one possibility is those are little uh, gullies that were carved by running water. And so they're uh, spending a fair amount of time examining the rocks uh, near those uh, features, the features themselves, and see if they can uh, determine the, that these were influenced by, uh, by liquid water. And so this was taken, I guess, three days ago. And uh, this was returned just this afternoon. And at first thought, I was thinking, my goodness, they're seeing clouds in the sky. And in fact, uh, Opportunity is up sort of on a ridge, and it's looking down into the crater. So these are sand dunes inside Endeavor Crater. Not, uh, so you're seeing the surface, not, not the sky beyond this ridge. So that was uh, just a fairly interesting uh, uh, image. And it also serves as where are we today? So just uh, the recap for uh, the Opportunity mission, again, day 4480. So far, it's driven 43.1 kilometers and returned uh, a little over 213,000 images. And it's still going strong. Um, I just talked with uh, one of the investigators on Opportunity this afternoon, and they've received yet another extended mission approval from NASA, meaning that they've got one more Mars year of funding to, uh, to keep operating the spacecraft. And I think this is something like their uh, seventh extended mission. So uh, I'm sorry, that's not right. Fifth extended mission. Um, so they're, uh, they're engaging in another two years of activity. And uh, the plan is once they're done with the current investigation of these uh, gullies is to move back outside of Marathon Valley and continue on to the south uh, to keep investigating the rocks along the, the rim of the crater. At some point within the next year, they expect to reach uh, sort of an entry point where they could drive into the crater and still make it back out again. And so uh, that's something to, to look forward to. Okay, let's move to the other side of the planet, Curiosity mission. It's day 1447. And on uh, August 5th, uh, earlier this month, uh, we celebrated the fourth anniversary of Curiosity's landing. So it's, uh, it's in its second Mars year, uh, for fourth Earth year. And uh, again, just to remind you where we are, this is Gale Crater. It's about 150 kilometers or so across. And here's the landing site. What 
drove us to Gale was this 15,000 foot high mound of uh, um, sedimentary rocks. And that's called Mount Sharp. This is the view from the surface of Mount Sharp. So the, uh, the goal of this mission has been to reach the foothills of Mount Sharp and then slowly start climbing the, the slopes of the, the mountain and investigate the, the history of the layers um, that you see in these rocks. The older layers are on the bottom. It gets younger as you travel up the side of the mountain and they'll be measuring the, uh, the environment that was present when uh, the rocks were formed. And this is a, a nice view, uh, returned about a year ago, of their target area. And so they're getting closer, they're uh, you know, going to be sort of uh, making their way up uh, the side of that mountain. And uh, so just an overhead view from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Uh, this is their landing site. Mount Sharp is sort of off down in the, the lower uh, right of the screen here. There's this large uh, accumulation of sand dunes. And what they needed to do was skirt around those dunes because they were afraid that they would get stuck in the dunes if they tried driving across them. And so they've spent uh, the better part of four years getting down to this area where they actually can cut um, around those dunes and, and finally get into the foothills. And so this is a close-up view from uh, MRO of the area that they're in right now. And I'm sure you will have a hard time seeing it, but they're, they're basically parked right here. And I'll zoom in in a second, but you see all of these uh, sort of flat-topped uh, mounds of rock, and we'll spend a little bit of time looking at those from the surface, because this is, uh, without a doubt, I think, one of the most scenic spots on Mars that we've uh, encountered so far. And so here's a, a little closer view. You can see the, the path of uh, Curiosity, and as of a couple days ago, this is where it was sitting. And so the, the images I'm going to be showing you are of these mesas, and uh, you may not be able to interpret them as mesas from this image, but in fact, this is lower than here. This is the top of the, the mesas. They're fairly flat-topped rocks. And uh, let's see if I can get this to advance. And so here's a 360-degree panorama that was uh, taken uh, uh, earlier in the month, and uh, here's these mesas that I've that I was talking about, and Mount Sharp is uh, is off in the distance here. And so this is just a little closer view, and I think next we've got a an animation sort of scrolling through that panorama, and then we'll we'll look at some high resolution images of this in a second. So here we go. I'm just going to page through uh, a small collection of these just because it's a uh, it's fairly amazing landscape that they're in right now. This is a sand dune and all these very finely layered rocks. I think the, uh, the conspiracy people that we've never actually gone to Mars, we're just uh, faking this by putting cameras in the desert southwest uh, are going to be going crazy here. <laughs> so uh, watch out for the breaking news in National Enquirer in the next week or so. But I mean, look at the, it's just remarkable. The, uh, the, some of the layers are more resistant than others. They get, uh, ero uh, the, the softer rocks get eroded away and just leave these exposed fingers of rock. Um, this is a notch in one of these mesas, and there's Mount Sharp off in the distance. And uh, the scale of this, uh, this particular guy is about uh, 15 meters, say 50 feet tall. 
Um, so it's not, I mean, this isn't a towering mountain, but it's certainly a, a substantial topography. And uh, I just wanted to, to go into one of the measurements they've been doing. This is the, the, uh, rock, the, the dust brush, if you will. It's a rotary brush with uh, stainless steel bristles on it. And when they want to clear the dust away from a rock so that they can get a better measurement of the rock itself and not uh, have the signal contaminated by uh, a couple of millimeters of dust, they put this down on the surface, they spin up a motor and, and uh, brush the, the dust away. And so here's uh, looking at a particular uh, slab of bedrock and a couple of interesting things they've been going after. You notice these bright veins. Um, they have been able to measure those and those are gypsum. And gypsum is formed by uh, uh, having uh, the mineral dissolved in water and you get cracks in these rocks. Water seeps up from underneath and then the, the, uh, the dissolved minerals precipitate in the in the fractures. And so we're seeing lots of, of those. This little disturbed area right here is where they shot the, the uh, laser from the ChemCam instrument and vaporized little spots of the rock so that they could measure the composition. And here's where, here's the after where they uh, used the, the wire brush to, uh, to clean the dust off. And then here is a microscope view where they looked up close in that area that they've cleaned off and you can sort of see the scrape marks and a little bit of the dust left behind. Um, and this is just another, uh, another exposure of this type of rock where you're seeing these veins uh, a little bit more resistant to erosion than the rock itself. So uh, the veins actually stick out from the the surface. And uh, this I, I thought was just interesting. We always talk about how dusty Mars is. This is uh, the far crater rim of uh, Gale Crater. And so we're looking probably 20 kilometers away through a fairly dusty atmosphere. And uh, it looks like the bad old days here in Denver when the, the brown cloud was, uh, was running rampant. Okay, so uh, recapping, we're at day 1447. They've driven almost 14 kilometers so far and uh, almost 350,000 images. And uh, just like uh, uh, Opportunity, Curiosity has been extended for one more Mars year as well. So we expect them to continue climbing up slope and. Uh, and I'll keep updating you monthly as this goes on.